Okay, that's right. You guessed it. In today's video, we're going to be talking about an explanation of Faraday's law. And this is the equation we use for Faraday's law, or this is Faraday's law. It says that the induced voltage or the induced EMF is equal to minus N times uh, uh, the change in the flux divided by the change in the time. Okay, so this is Faraday's law. This is the equation we use to calculate the induced voltage from Faraday's law. And you should really be able to say what this equation means in your own words, okay? As I said, V is for the voltage, minus sign uh, times N. N is the number of windings in the coil. This is the change in the flux. This triangle delta means the change in the flux divided by the change in the time. Now this minus sign, I'll just get this out of the way really quick. This comes from Lenz's law, which we're not going to be discussing in this video. I will do that in the next video. But I'll leave the minus sign there. This is the change in the flux. If you're not sure what the magnetic flux is, you could watch the video by linking in the upper right-hand corner here for the explanation of the magnetic flux. So what does all of this mean? Basically, what all of this means is that a voltage will be induced in a coil of wire. Here's the voltage that will be induced in a coil of wire when the magnetic flux, this is the symbol for the magnetic flux, when the magnetic flux changes over time. So we have a change in the magnetic flux, not just a magnetic flux, but a change in the magnetic flux over time. That is Faraday's law kind of in equations and then there in words. Now I can also write Faraday's law like this. This is the same equation. You'll see it written in different forms. The voltage induced is equal to minus n times uh, the change in the magnetic flux, the magnetic flux is calculated as the area of the coil times the magnetic field strength divided by the change in time. Now, sometimes you'll see on here a cosine of theta. That takes care of the fact of whether or not the coil is kind of perpendicular or the line that's perpendicular to the face of the coil and the magnetic field are parallel to each other. But in this case, we'll assume they are parallel, and that means the angle between them would be zero, and the cosine of zero is one, so we're going to leave that off. All right? So this is Faraday's law, and you can see there are four things. The number of windings, the area, the magnetic field strength, the time over, with the, over which these changes occur, and the number of windings. Those are the things that will affect the amount of the induced voltage when we change the magnetic flux through that coil. And you should really know for each of those things, do, do they have an indirect or direct relationship with the voltage? So for example, the area is in the top half of this frag. That means if I increase the area, I'll increase the induced voltage. That means they have a direct relationship. Increase the area, increase the induced voltage. The same thing goes for the magnetic field. This is B is the symbol for the magnetic field strength. It's the top half of that fraction. There's a direct relationship between the magnetic field strength and the induced voltage. If I increase the induced voltage, then I increase the, mag the uh, if I increase the magnetic field strength, then I increase the induced voltage. Also, therefore, if I decrease these, then the voltage will decrease. Now, for the time, it's a little different, obviously, because the time is in the bottom half of this fraction. That means there's an indirect relationship or an inverse relationship between the voltage and the time. Usually, what we want to do are usually in a problems, although it could go the other way, you decrease the time. And when you decrease the time, because it's an inverse relationship, then the voltage will increase. Right? If I divide by a smaller number, then I get a larger result. Okay, and also the windings. This winding, the N is in the front here, a multiplier, so there's a direct relationship between the number of windings and the induced voltage. If I increase the windings in the coil, I put more windings on the coil, go from 300 to 600 to 1200, then I'm going to be increasing the induced voltage. Okay, so you should know this relationship for each of the factors that affect the amount of the induced voltage, the magnitude of the induced voltage. Now, what I'm going to try and do now is go through for each condition, magnetic field strength, area, time, and number of windings, uh, a little ex explanation, an example, and calculate how we would calculate the induced voltage using Faraday's law. So now this red square here is a loop of wire, a coil of wire. It's 40 centimeters on a side, and we're going to talk first about changing the magnetic field. And you can see there's no X's and no uh, little dots in here, so the, there's no magnetic field in that coil of wire. So the magnetic field in that coil is zero Teslas. Now what I can do is I can change that over time, and I can increase the magnetic field strength over time. And you can see now we have the magnetic field pointing out of the board. 
because those are the dots and not the x's, the direction of the magnetic field or the direction of the change does not matter for calculating the magnitude of the induced voltage with Faraday's law. And let's just say, I'm kind of making these numbers up as we go along, that the final, this was the initial, this is the final magnetic field strength is 75 milliteslas or 75 times 10 to the minus 3 teslas. And we could say that that change occurred over a 3 second interval, 3.5 second interval actually. Okay, so now we can get out Faraday's law. Now you'll notice I left the N off of here because we're well, assuming that there's only one winding. When it doesn't say there's how many windings there are, you can just assume there's one winding. So we have one winding. You don't need to put the N there because N is one and you don't necessarily have to write the one there. If you want to, go right ahead. Okay, we're talking about changing, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the magnetic field strength. So that's that A times B is how we calculate the magnetic flux. And just for emphasis, you can see here we're leaving the area of the coil the same. We're changing the magnetic field strength, dividing it by the time. Plug the numbers in. The area, which is the constant value in this case, is 40 by 40. That's 0.4 times 0.4 meters. Always convert to meters. And this is the change in the magnetic field. Now we went from 0 to 75 times 10 to the minus 3. That means the change is actually 75, point, 75 times 10 to the minus 3 teslas. And then we divide by the time, and that's 3.5 seconds, and we get that the induced voltage in that case would be minus 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. Okay? So that's how it kind of works out for changing uh, uh, magnetic field strength. Now, for changing the area, it's a little different. In this case, we have this is our magnetic field area. This inside this white box. Here's the magnetic field. The magnetic field points into the page. And we're going to change the area. Now, we're not actually changing the size of the coil. You can do that by, like, stretching the coil or changing its length or something. But all we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the amount of area of the coil that's inside the magnetic field. Okay, I think that's the more common way you'll see a problem. You're usually not changing the actual shape or size of the coil. And you can see, it once again, for the initial conditions, there is no coil inside the magnetic field. So... The area is the amount of the area of the coil that's inside the magnetic field or has magnetic field in it. But now what we're going to do over three seconds, we're going to move that coil into the magnetic field like that. Now it's fully in the magnetic field, so that change in the area that has magnetic field in it is 6 times 10 to the minus 4. All I did is I took 0 0.03 meters times 0 0.02 meters and you get 6 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. you got to convert to meters. These values are given in centimeters. And once again, we could just say that in this case, the time in which we did that was 3 seconds. Now I can get my equation out for Faraday's law. I can make the emphasis here on the changing the area, and this is staying constant. The magnetic field strength being 4 milliteslas. I'm going to take the change in the area. Now the change in the area is this value, because once again, we start at 0, then we go up to this. So here is the area. And we have the magnetic field strength, which we kept constant, and we divide by 3, and we get that in that case, the induced voltage is minus 8 times 10 to the minus 8 times 10 to the minus 7 volts. Okay, so that's changing the area. So we did change in the magnetic field, change the area. Now we're going to be changing the time. I'm just going to use this same example. And instead of saying 3 seconds, I'm going to say, okay, I'm not going to take 3 seconds to move that coil in, but I move the coil in twice as fast in half as much time which would be 1.5 seconds of just taking the same coil, the same conditions, and the same equation. I move this in more quickly. And so all i got to do in this equation is just change the time from 3 seconds to 1.5 seconds. I divide by a number that's half as big or a smaller number, and I get a higher voltage. In this case, the induced voltage would be minus 16 times 10 to the minus 7 volts. Okay? So that is how it affects changing the time. If you change it, if you increase the time, then you get a lower voltage. If you decrease the time, then you get a greater induced voltage. All right? Okay, and of course, the last thing is, we're going to talk about the number of windings. The number of windings, we're just going to say that in this case, there's 50. We always said in all the previous examples, there's just one winding. So now we're going to say there's 50 winding. Normally a coil has more than one winding on it. It could be 1,000, it could be 2,000, it could be like 100 or something, but we have more windings. So here's Faraday's law. Here it is again. I put the n back because now we have an n that's greater than 1. And I'm just going to calculate the induced voltage again. And I'm just going to say that that's minus 50 
because it's not that it's less than 50, but it's minus, and I said that's Lenz's law, which we'll talk about in the next video, 50 times that change in the area, okay, times uh, the uh, magnetic field strength. This is the area, this is the magnetic field strength, and we're going to divide by the time. I went back to the time being 3 seconds, not 1.5, and you get, in that case, that um, the induced voltage is minus 4 times 10 to the minus 5. Remember in the volts, in the previous example, we had 8 times 10 to the minus 7. Well, this is 4 because 8 times 50 is 400, and uh, that means that we get a, a greater induced voltage. This is minus 5, which is 2 orders of magnitude greater than minus 7. So you can see we increased the um, induced voltage by a factor of 2 in this case. Okay? Uh, or, you know, uh, two orders of magnitude greater. Okay, so there we go. I think that was all I wanted to do. We talked about the equation. We talked about the factors that affect the equation, inverse and direct. And then I went through an example and did a short calculation for changing the magnetic field, changing the area, changing the time, decreasing the time, and then changing the number of windings, which we increased, okay? So there you go. Thank you very much, Father. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, Please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You could also uh, give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care about them. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.